What's up guys, it's Kayla and welcome back to Meteorology Monday. Today we're going to talk about the jet stream. What is the jet stream? Where does it go? What does it do? How does it flow? How does it affect storms? All of the things. So there's a lot that goes into the jet stream. There's a lot of technical stuff, but I'm going to try to keep it a little bit simple and not go too atmospheric scientist on you. Basically, the jet stream is this really narrow band of really strong winds in the upper atmosphere that flow from west to east all around the world. This occurs in both the northern and southern hemispheres. Since things are just mirrored on the southern hemisphere, everything I talk about today is just going to be for the northern hemisphere. Then when I say for the northern, you can just say it's the same for the southern. So in each hemisphere, we have two jets. We have the subtropical jet, and then above that, we also have the polar jet. As you can probably tell, the polar jet is one that's closer to the Arctic Circle up at the top, where there's polar temperatures, and the subtropical jet is down more near the equator and tropical regions. I'm sure you've probably seen in science class a while ago this three-cell system that the Earth's atmosphere has. If not, here's a little reminder for you. So looking at this image, you can see that we have three different cells of air rotation that occur in the atmosphere. We have the Hadley cell, the ferro cell, and the polar cell. Also from this diagram, you can see that the Hadley and polar cells both rotate counterclockwise, where the ferro cell in the middle rotates clockwise. This causes an area of rising motion between two of the cells and sinking motion between the other two. These areas where the cells meet are called the jet streams. Before we get into speeds and storms and all the stuff that comes with the jet stream, let's first talk about the jet stream locations. Height-wise, the jet streams vary between 4 to 8 miles above the ground. If we're looking at the United States, the jet streams change position between the summer and the winter. In the summer, the polar jet is mostly up over Canada and maybe down towards the border a little bit, but mostly up where it's still cold. The subtropical jet, however, is over the southern half of the United States, more like over southern California, Texas-Oklahoma border, down into Georgia and Florida, where it's really hot. Then in the winter time frame, all of these jet streams move south. So where you once had this warm subtropical jet, you now have the polar jet sneaking down. This polar jet can come as far down as the bottom of the United States, but it normally stays over the northern half of the United States. The states, again, where we think of are really cold in the winter. Now let's move on to speeds. Since the jet streams are basically these huge rivers of air in the sky, they can get up to some pretty crazy speeds. Winds of over 275 miles per hour have been recorded in these jet streams. That's crazy. Now talking about why the jet streams are so fast and all that is a little bit more technical, I will warn you. There's a lot of math involved and there's a lot of physics having to do with the rotation of the Earth, but I'm not gonna rant about that right now. If you wanna hear more about that, definitely leave me a comment down below. Maybe I'll do it if you're interested. It just might get a little bit technical. So, recapping so far, we have two jets, the polar and the subtropical jets, they're really fast and they're really high up in the atmosphere and they're basically rivers of air that flow from west to east. Oh, and another fact, both of the jets become much stronger in the winter months. Now let's see how they affect our storm systems. The jet streams are responsible for bringing all of our weather from the west coast to the east coast. If you watch the weather broadcast, you'll see that all the low pressure systems, high pressure systems, rain systems, all of the storms and everything always move from you know, the west side of California all the way to the east coast off into the Atlantic. This is due to those jet streams. The high winds up aloft always push all the storms from west to east. And the polar jet especially, since it's a boundary between the really cold Canadian air and the warmer air that's associated with the subtropics, has a lot to do with our weather. This polar jet is one of the two main reasons that we have something called Tornado Alley in the United States. As we said before, the polar jet brings in colder Arctic air down into an area that's normally warm. So since it normally sits around 60 degrees north latitude, that means that it's blowing in colder Canadian air over the Rocky Mountains and down into the Great Plains area of the United States. Well, this area of the United States also doesn't have any mountains bordering the south. So we can have warm, moist air flow up from the Gulf of Mexico. As you've also probably heard in your science classes, when warm and cold meet, a lot of bad things can happen. So mixing that cold polar jet air with the hot and humid Gulf Stream air doesn't bode well for the middle of the United States. So if you're living in Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas area, you know, where all those big tornadoes always happen, you can blame the polar jet stream. 
So here's a bit of a look into the jet stream and how it works and how it affects storms in the United States. Again, there's a lot of technical things that go into the jet stream that I could talk about, but it might be a little bit boring. But if you're interested, definitely let me know. If you like this topic, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below. It definitely helps us out and lets us know that you guys like hearing what we're talking about. We've got a lot of really cool videos planned for the future, so you definitely don't want to miss out on those. If you want to see more of our weather adventures, don't forget to follow us over on Instagram and Facebook. And we also have a blog talking about the technology behind meteorology, which is always going to be linked in that description. We also started a Patreon page if you guys want to help us continue capturing the best content we can and putting out videos like this every week. Those of you who support us over on Patreon also get access to the full photo albums from our chase days. Not everything makes it onto Instagram, so definitely go check it out. As always, my name is Kayla, thanks for watching, and happy jet streaming!